honestly like 70 republicans of the house who like have some shit like this um but like I mean, Alex Azar was in the fucking Trump administration. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, I can't touch him. He's awesome. Yeah, you don't have to talk about Yeah, he's in intelligence. At this point, though, it really doesn't have anything to do with Epstein or any of that. It's literally, uh, if you want there to be sex education in schools, it's because you want to groom kids. Yeah. So it doesn't and- matter that, like, half of Trump's, like, state-level uh, – uh, campaign uh, chairs have been indicted for human trafficking, like actual human, like like child yeah. sex trafficking. Like I mean, right. like I'm leaving aside like GOP figures of a national prominence. These are people who are all like uh, donors and party members at like the state level who are yeah, like uh, being and then a ton of QAnon people too have been like you know like QAnon people love getting mode. busted with <laughs> terif- ter- teraflops of child pornography. It's their favorite yeah. thing. Yeah, and, and like, and the other thing that's weird about this is like, oh, like you know, anyone who wants to like sexualize your children, like, then by saying, like, again, by sexualize your children, they mean like any kind of like comprehensive sex education or just acknowledging that gay or trans people exist. That's sexualizing children. Whereas, like, if you're like, no, like you have to protect your children behind a, the the veil of prophecy. You have to bring them to the veiled prophet ball, the purity balls, the uh, the Miss Universe pageants. Like, like that is how you protect children from being overly sexualized by um, uh, sick, sick weirdos. Yeah, who, uh, have a lot of money and power. If if a teacher is like trying to molest your child uh, because he like has gauge earrings or something, like that's if they see like gauges that's uh, grooming them. That's like yeah, half the like lives of tiktok account is like one out of every like 50 is like someone where it's like okay this guy this guy's a goofball but then like 49 others is like look at this fucking bitch who wore a polka dot dress to teach third graders let's kill her she's yeah, grooming I mean, them just... but but like yeah if you're doing but like if you're afraid of that happening like a uh like sort of rockabilly bisexual woman doing that to your kid the only defense is to get your half son who's sort of like a mentally deficient uh maintenance man <laughs> to the local school your secret son to d- build a city of tree branches and twigs underneath the school <laughs> where every year he has to like you know get rid of the few of the kids to protect the other ones for the yellow king yeah yeah, and like you know, and and we've and we've talked about this before. I mean, like the this is very 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 clearly just like the 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 newest recycling of like an like an old slander that like you know like all gay men just want to like molest kids. Like that there's no difference between being gay and being uh, like a predator of some kind. That there's something inherently predatory about um, homosexuality or transsexuality. I mean, and and again, like all the people doing it are like the, the the fucking most grotesque pigs and freaks imaginable. Like, I mean, these are people like the guy in Tennessee who literally married a high school student is like behind, a, you know, like a, a, a behind this legislation and shit like that. Um, but anyway, like I, I thought I would dive, I thought we would dive into the uh, mentality of uh, the people that want to, you know, uh, protect your protect your kids from being you know taught about sex in school, and you know the place to go for for anything. If, if, look, if you want to if you want to if you want to gauge what normal Americans think about human sexuality, there's only one stop shop, and that's thefederalist.com. So the normalest place on earth. Yeah, I wanted to check in on thefederalist.com to see what they have to say about all this, and uh, courtesy of a. <laughs> Uh, a young lady named Kylie Zemple. I feel like we've probably Oh, no, we, yeah, no, we yeah, read her, we did, her, her, yeah, her article where she was like, um, guess what? I work hard, and, like, my my Chipotle burrito is 30 cents more. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> should, bring yeah, back yeah, slavery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is uh, uh, Kylie Zemple writing in The Federalist. Uh, the headline is, weirdos who want to sexualize your children should absolutely be stigmatized as groomers. Uh, so this is just uh, from, from today at thefederalist.com. Uh, Kylie Zemple writes, what does it say about the pathetic state of the political right that instead of spending our energy advancing the ideas and institutions that promote human flourishing, we're quibbling over whether groomers is the right word to refer to people who delight in sexualizing other people's kids and hiding it from their parents? Sorry, I just I love like the new soy right wing because it's just like internalized Twitter speak from the last six years. So it's like, oh, yeah, it's really normal when we're deciding whether to call pedophiles groomers or not over on the bird site <laughs> I w- i'm interested in this human flourishing that they're talking about i uh, what, what 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 are the what are the human flourishing uh, agenda that 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 uh that they're supposed to be advancing i'm still I waiting mean, for I, some I of that like I, 
human flourishing. I felt like I was flourishing until I was had human reproduction explained to me. It's been nothing but downhill since then. <laughs> um, so he goes, the ranks of progressive and unmistakably pro-LGBT media who spend their days throwing around insulting hyperbole like Nazi, fascist, and silence is violence are being joined by so-called conservatives who've taken it upon themselves to lecture those on the right, those to the right of them that actually... It's not appropriate to call kids entertainment creators and stake-sanctioned educators who insist on sexually indoctrinating five-year-olds groomers. It's absolutely absurd. Conservatives aren't abandoning their principles by abandoning needless throat clearing about teachers' alleged good faiths and alleged good faith and the left's intentions. We all know the left's intentions because they've made them perfectly clear. The most recent go-around started with them maliciously branding a bill protecting parents' rights, which are absolutely nece an absolutely necessi necessity for societal survival, as a bill that banned mention of the word gay in schools. It was a lie. The legislation seeks to keep leftist dogma about gender identity and sexual orientation away from five and not five to nine-year-old kids. Now, like I, I know, like the way that they've uh, like actually crafted this bill is like vague enough that like that could technically be true, but like it's all intentionally vague because like it. It's designed to give the broadest leeway possible for, like, you know, uh, p parents to get a teacher fired because uh, they're gay or something. And like, and it's also this idea that, like, like you, you should never, like, like uh, if you're if you're a teacher, like, you should never, like, let, like, uh, tell tell your kids if if you're gay because, like, that's introducing like your personal uh, beliefs or like lifestyle. But like, if you're straight, like, how do you hide the fact that you're straight from kids? You know, if you're married or or have kids or something like that, it's just. They're getting like they, I think they like they, they they're they're promoting the idea that like oh we it's not about don't say gay but it's about like we don't want kids to ever learn of the fact that gay people exist in human society and are like a part of it and uh, essentially as normal as anyone else is like that's what they have a problem with they just want gay people back in the closet and in the U.S. Senate you know continuing I mean, they want that but once again it's not it's not they, they're not getting it in school. Nobody pays attention in school. Nobody remembers anything that they learned in school. They're getting it from the same culture that the rest of us are steeped in, and that's what they hate, but there's no button to press. I mean, I guess you could go uh, protest in front of uh, uh, the entrance to Disneyland like some yahoos did yesterday uh, in Anaheim, but that's all you can do. I mean, this stuff, it really, you see, like, it's just this impotent tantrum, and as long as it makes someone suffer somewhere, uh, it's doing the job. It doesn't actually have to affect any of the these processes that are going on. That, that yeah, they can't stop. You know, I said this the other day, but like, it's this it's this fixation on the idea that like, uh, your child's third grade teacher or a Disney cartoon could like fundamentally alter your child's value or sense of self and identity, or like like that that carries more weight than you as a parent in like shaping who the person that like you're raising will become. And I'm just like, who the fuck, like who the fuck had teachers that were like that powerful over their life in like third or second grade? You know I mean? We've all had good teachers, but like the bad teachers you mostly don't remember. Or I mean, maybe you remember if they're funny or not, but like, like school and homework are fucking lame. Like if that can change your entire worldview and like, you know, contrary to what your parents are hoping to instill in you, then like chances are your parents stink. And yeah. like, it just sort of like raise your own fucking kids, like be a better parent if you don't want your kids to just be like brainwashed by seeing Frozen. Yeah, I think I forgot the names of at least seventy five percent of my teachers. Like, like, like for kids, it is really just like it, it's the place where you have to go. A lot of it is just not, you know, those memories are going to get replaced by like things Dan Quinn said. <laughs> For me, at least, that's my case. <laughs> like you're right. Like, somebody, like, somebody, like, like <laughs> some, yeah, some teacher probably tried to like groom me into not watching a mentally ill man on YouTube for um, 17 years of my life until he was hospitalized, and they failed. <laughs> yeah, because no, like, like, of how my parents raised me. <laughs> like long division has been completely pushed out of my brain by uh, the video. Can he do eight? Of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of Dan Quinn yeah. ripping bongs in, in in his car and talking yeah. about how like uh, like stevia infused weed cures cancer. I wrote like a ten page. I was like a politics nerd in high school, and I wrote like a ten page essay about Wendell Wilkie. And it's like, <laughs> you know what? All that information has been obliterated by the times that Dan Quinn used the phrase "queer the deal." 
<laughs> it just doesn't stick with you. Like, I'm sorry, you know. Uh, Zempel continues, uh, when the left lost and the bill got signed into law, furious executives at Florida-based Disney began ranting about their quest to inject sexual deviancy into children's entertainment. In a video call leaked to investigative journalist Christopher Rufo, Christopher Rufio, sorry, uh, Disney executive uh, Latoya Revenue uh, bragged about her not-at-all-secret gay agenda and attempts at adding queerness wherever she could in kids' shows. Another employee talked openly about his attempts to explore queer stories and introduce gender non-conforming characters. There was more where that came from. Well, I mean, like, it's just, they're giving up the game here because it's just, like, to them, like, being gay is sexual deviancy. And to, uh, you know, like, uh, include gay characters or gay or deviancy in children's media is to be like i don't know what like actively turn turning kids gay or recruiting kids to be gay or i don't know making people who wouldn't be gay uh who wouldn't otherwise be gay turn gay or something i mean i don't know maybe that's the case but like i mean it reduces it does you could you can i mean if it reduces the stigma then it reduces like the barrier between uh someone deciding i'm gonna you know uh i'm gonna explore these feelings i have and see like where they go or just saying nope that's not it's it's too dangerous it's too uh there's too much hostility for me to do that i'm gonna just uh suppress it and you know maybe that would actually make someone like in a in like a real sense gay who wouldn't have been because they would have repressed it enough that it wouldn't be you know something that they even thought about all the time you know they, they wouldn't even be aware of how much they had suppressed it because it happened at such a deep level because of those social cues that they were observing. Uh, and this is where, you know, the liberal social order breaks down because if you, if you do think that homosexuality is deviancy, it isn't uh, a, a disordered and inferior way to live, uh, then like the, the uh, liberal multicultural uh, answer for all these questions is insufficient, you know? And so that's why they've all decided that they're going to try to create a, a parallel either take over the 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 uh the commanding heights of p culture uh the more delusional ones anyway and and reaffirm you know traditional values uh, or creating a parallel uh state i mean the real point of this as many people have pointed out is to just get rid of public education yeah because yeah no yeah if, if it's all if it's if it's uh private schools then you can pick which the curriculums and you can pick the values that are going to be taught. And then, Hey, if, if uh, the daily wire has their alternative to Disney, well, then you can, you can still have your kid on a uh, fucking tablet for 18 hours a day, but you can be sure that they're not because you have like the firewall up and you've got the daily collar kids uh, uh, booted into the uh, into your systems. Then you can be sure that they're not going to be getting it anywhere else. And I honestly, I think that they're probably going to get it. Because it's not like they're the only people who want to get rid of public education. Plenty of liberals do, too. I, I think, like, more generally speaking, though, we're, like, we're locked into a dance. And we're going to be locked into it until something completely breaks and we can no longer do it. Yeah. But the dance will be, um, and, and th there were versions of this, but they happened over long periods of time. But now I think it'll be year to year, just be on the virtue of how fast things move. Uh, the dance will be, like, you know, that sort of um, the three or four large media companies in America, every few years, they're going to have to engage in like some form of clumsy ass covering. They're going to have to take the uh, legitimate grievances of a group of people and try to digest it through their organs of uh, superfluous creative personnel and bloated content schedules and, and try to sort of shit out a product that keeps them as as, as uh, little so 